Hi guys, welcome back. In a previous video, I showed you how to use one of the new functions in Excel, the group by function. And in this video, we're going to explore its sister function that was released at the same time, pivot by. And these two functions are very, very similar. The difference between them is that with group by, we can only aggregate data based off of rows. Whereas with pivot by, we can aggregate data based on rows and columns. And the way to think of pivot by is it's really a way of creating a pivot table style report, but using a single formula. So in this lesson, we're going to explore some of the functionality so you understand what you're looking at, and we'll talk through some of the benefits. And the way that I'm going to do this is we're going to build a pivot table, first of all, so you can compare something that you're more familiar with directly with the results of the pivot by function. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in learning, then keep the eyeballs on the screen. So I'm starting out with a very simple data set. Of course, yours might be much longer. You might have many, many rows. But the principle of how this formula works is exactly the same. Now, in the video, which I will link up here that I did on group by, I didn't put my data set into a table. Now, the reason why I didn't do that was because I wanted you to be able to understand the formula without having to worry about table references in case you're not familiar with those. But in this lesson, we are going to use a table to make everything nice and dynamic. So let's do that. First of all, I'm going to click in my data set control T. Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. And it's applied a completely hideous table style. So let's change that straight away. I'm just going to say no table style. The next thing I'm going to do is give my table a name. Now we can do that on the table design ribbon in the properties group just here. Currently, we just have the very generic table one. Now, it's always beneficial to name your tables when you're working in Excel. It's a great habit to get into. Table names give us a quick way of identifying different tables in our workbook, and we can also use them in things like formulas to make those a little bit more user friendly as well. So let's click up here. I'm just going to call this, we'll just call it sales rev and hit enter. Now I'm going to start out by building just a regular pivot table. And I will say before I begin, I am assuming that you do have basic pivot table knowledge in this tutorial. If you don't, I will leave a link to my pivot tables tutorial up here and you can go and check that out. Now from the table design ribbon, we're going to click summarize with pivot table. Our table range, well, it's picked up the sales rev range. That's what we're using. And I'm going to put this pivot table on this same worksheet. So let's choose existing worksheet and I'm just going to put it just here. Let's click on OK. So now we have our empty pivot table report and we have our pivot table fields pane on the right hand side. And what we see in here are basically the column headings from our data set. And the way that pivot tables work, if you're not all that familiar, is that we can drag and drop these different headings down into one of these four areas to build an aggregated pivot table report. So the first thing I'm going to do here is something very basic. We're just going to grab city and drop it down into rows. You can see as soon as I do that, we get all of the cities. And this is a unique list of the cities in the rows. And then I want to summarize by the profit, which I'm going to drop into values. So very quickly there, I've been able to create a quick, small pivot table report that shows the sum of profit by the city. And notice here by default, we have grand totals turned on at the bottom. Now let's try and do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to use the pivot by formula. So let's click over here. Let's make this a little bit wider. I'm going to type in equals pivot by. Now you can see that we have loads and loads of different arguments. Now the only real difference between the pivot by formula and the group by formula is that with pivot by we have arguments related to columns, whereas in group by we only have arguments related to rows. Now currently with the pivot table that we built, we dragged the city field down into rows. We didn't put any fields in columns. So in this first example, we're only using rows. So any argument related to columns, we don't really need to use. So row fields for pivot by, well, our row is going to be the city, the same as the pivot table comma. Do we want any column fields? Well, we're recreating our pivot table. We don't have any there, so we're not going to have any here. Comma to skip over that. What are we aggregating? Well, in our pivot table, 
we aggregated the profit field. So we're going to select profit as our values, comma. Now this is the last mandatory argument and that is function. And notice we get a big long list of 16 functions that we could choose, 16 aggregation options. So you could go for a min, a max, an average, all of that good stuff. Note that we have a couple of newer ones in there, percent of and also array to text. Now what did we do in the pivot table? We did a sum of the profit. So I'm going to choose some from this list. It's the first one. So we just need to press tab, close the bracket, hit enter. And what do we get? We get something that looks very similar to our pivot table. And notice again that by default, we have the grand total or the total in this case at the bottom. Now you might be thinking to yourself at this stage, okay, great. The pivot table seemed a lot easier. So what is the advantage of doing this? Well, one of the main advantages is that when you use pivot by, it is dynamic. So if any changes are made to the source data, then your pivot by is going to automatically update. Let me show you what I mean. If I was to add another record onto the bottom here, and we'll go for a different agent ID, let's say Belfast, we'll just say city center, and we'll add some figures. Now check out the difference between these two. Notice that where we've used pivot by, it's automatically added Belfast into the results. Whereas in the pivot table, Belfast doesn't exist yet. And that is because with pivot tables, every time we make a change to the source data, we need to remember to go back to the pivot table, right click and choose refresh. As soon as we refresh the pivot table, you can see it's brought Belfast through. But we had to do none of that using pivot by, it just automatically updated. So that is one of the big advantages of using this formula. The other big advantage is that because it is a formula, we can combine it with other functions, other formulas, sort, unique. We can add lambdas into it to really unleash the power of the pivot by function. So the potential here is huge. Now let's explore some of those other arguments in the pivot by formula. And remember that when you're working with a dynamic array formula, which pivot by is, you can only edit the formula in the cell that you entered it into. So if I click somewhere else randomly in this little table of data, notice that the formula is grayed out in the formula bar. I need to go back to the original cell, which for me was cell I4, and now I can edit it. So we're going to go to the end of this formula. We're going to click and we're going to press comma because we're now into our set of optional arguments. So the first one here is if we want to display field headers. Now don't make the mistake here of thinking column headers. These are field headers, okay? So if you think about fields in a pivot table, as opposed to the actual column headers. So we can say, no, we don't want to display our field headers. Yes, but don't show them. No, but generate. I wouldn't recommend that one. It can generate some weird things or yes and show. So we do have field headers or column headers in this case in our data set. And yes, I want to show them. So I'm going to select the third option just here, comma. We can now choose if we want to display grand totals, subtotals, if we don't want to display them at all. And if we want them at the top or the bottom. Now for this example, I'm going to say no totals. So let's say zero, comma. We can now choose the row sort order. Now, remember when we built the pivot table, we dragged the city field down into the rows and we didn't drag any field into columns. So row sort order, this is going to be how we want to sort our little table. Now, the formula is looking for an index number as its input. What is an index number? Well, it's one, two, three, four. If you've ever used the VLOOKUP formula, you might be familiar with the column index number. That's the same here. So we need to tell the formula which column we want to sort by, first of all. So maybe I want to sort by the city name, which is column number one, and I want to sort in descending order. Now, if I want to sort in descending, I need to put a minus on the front here. If I want ascending order, it's simply a one. If I wanted to sort by column two, so the profit in ascending order, I would type two. If I wanted it in descending order, I would type minus two. So we're going to go for minus one, comma, and the next two arguments are both related to columns. Now we're not actually using columns in our formula at the moment. If you remember, we didn't drag a field 
into that columns area when we built our pivot table. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to skip over the next two arguments and move straight on to filter array because this is where we can define if we want to exclude anything from our results. So maybe I want to exclude Manchester from my results. What I can do here is I can select my filter array, which is the city. And what I'm going to say is exclude whenever you find Manchester. Let's hit enter and see what it looks like. And there we go. We can see all of those changes that have been made. We have our field header at the top, city. We have the cities organized into descending order. We have the grand totals been removed and Manchester has been excluded from our results. Now, if I wanted to do exactly the same thing in the pivot table, I would need to first apply a filter. So let's go to city and I'm going to say that I want to exclude Manchester so we can untick that and click on OK. I would then need to go and turn off the grand totals. Let's go up to the design ribbon, grand totals, we'll say off for rows and columns. I then need to sort Z to A on the city column. And now our pivot table looks like our pivot by report. So hopefully you're starting to make the connection between pivot tables and pivot by. Let's move it on a little bit and add columns into the fun. Now I'm going to change the layout of this pivot table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag city into columns and I'm going to put date into rows. Now, don't worry too much about all the gaps in this data. That's absolutely fine in this example. But just really note that if we take a look, we have dates in our rows area and now we have city in our columns area. So how would I recreate this using pivot by? Well, let's move our pivot table over a little bit and let's try and do this. So we're going to go back to the original cell. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete out what we have in there and let's start this again. So let's go for pivot by our row fields. What are our row fields? Well, our row fields this time is the date column. So we're going to select this column instead. Remember, that's what we dragged to rows, comma, columns. We have something in columns now. We have the cities. So our column fields are the cities, comma values. Well, we're still doing a sum of the profit. So let's select the profit column and we're doing a sum. Let's press tab because it's the top of the list. Let's just close our bracket and see what that looks like. Now, notice I'm getting a spill error. Now, you'll get a spill error when it can't spill the results because there's something in the way. So I'm going to guess that my pivot table is getting in the way of all of these spilled results. So let's select the pivot table and let's drag her all the way over here. And there we go. As soon as I move her out of the way, we now have our results. Now, notice here we need to apply some formatting. So we need to format these numbers so that they are dates. So we're going to say we'll just say short date just there. And then we could auto fit some of these columns, so on and so forth. Maybe I want to make these bold. Once again, you could use conditional formatting like I showed in my group by video to make all of this dynamic. Now, if we go back to our pivot by formula and click on the end here, remember, you don't just have to use some. You could use any of these aggregation options. Now, one that you might not be aware of is percent of. This is a new aggregation option that was introduced at the same time as group by and pivot by. So if we select that and hit enter, it changes everything to percentages. Note that when we have a one, that's effectively 100%. But all we would need to do is just to change the formatting applied to these cells to percentage format. And what we should find is that everything equals 100%. So if you add these up and you add these up, those equal 100. So this is a really great way of seeing not only the percentage of profit by city, but also how much each record contributes as a percentage to the overall profit. Now, I'm just going to go back up here and I'm going to change this back to a sum calculation. Now, let's do something a little bit different here. Currently, my row fields are my dates. Now, what if instead of listing out the full date, I just want to show the year in my pivot by report? 
Well, we can do that by modifying our pivot by formula. So let's go up to the formula bar. And the first argument here is row field. So this is basically what's pulling the dates from our original source data and putting them into our report. Now, what formula can we use to extract the year from a date? Well, if you guessed year, then you would be right. So let's type in year. Year only has one argument, and that is the serial number. So basically the array of cells that contains your dates. So that's already selected for me. It's the sales rev all date column. So I just need to go to the end of date and close off the bracket. So when we hit enter, what we're going to get is a report that looks something like this. Now it looks a little bit strange, but that's just related to formatting. So if I select these cells and put these to general, we now get the years 2022 to 2024. And I also change this back to sum instead of percent of, so I need to make sure that I change this from percentage format back to general or whichever formatting I want to use. So let's put a comma in there like so. And now my report looks a lot tidier and a lot easier to read. So let's just finish off by running through the rest of the arguments for pivot by. So let's jump up to our formula. Let's press comma. Field headers, do I want to include field headers? Now, in this case, it means it would just add city into a cell up here. Now, that's not going to be particularly useful. My field headers are pretty much self-explanatory. I can see the cities, I can see the dates. So I'm just going to skip over this argument. Let's press comma. Do I want to do anything with the row totals? Now, looking at my totals, again, I'm pretty happy with how the column and the row totals look. So I'm going to skip over this option. Row sort order. Now remember, our dates are in our rows, so do I want to organize these in descending or ascending order? Well, let's do a minus one in here to sort them in descending. Comma. Again, I'm happy with my column totals, so I'm going to skip over this one. Column sort order. So in our columns, we have the cities. Do I want to rearrange these? Well, let's do them in descending order again. And then finally, we can choose if we want to exclude anything from our results. So once again, I could maybe choose to exclude the city of, let's say, we want to exclude Liverpool. Close the bracket, hit enter, and now you can see those changes have been made. So check out our years. They've been reorganized. We now have the latest year at the top. Our cities are in descending order and Liverpool has been removed from the results. So those are some of the ways that you can utilize the new pivot by function. Just to recap, the main benefits of pivot by over pivot tables are that it automatically updates and you can combine it with other formulas and create some really cool things. You can even combine it with lambdas to truly unleash the power of pivot by. What do you guys think of it? Do you like it or do you think you're going to stick to pivot tables? Let me know down in the comments, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.